The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. So we've been teaching this weekend about the Holy Spirit and um, the present day ministry of the Holy Spirit. And the more I teach along these lines, um, the more I feel really good about it and the more I feel that I probably need to do it even more and more and more. Jesus said, if I go away, you're going to be better off because I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has a lot of real practical uh, ministries in our life on an everyday basis. The Bible says that he's our comforter. He comforts us when we're hurting. He's our counselor. He counsels us when we don't know what to do and we need help. Don't run to people first. Always go to God first and ask for his wisdom. Don't get mad at somebody else because they're not giving you the comfort that you need. Go to the comforter and then he'll use whoever he wants to to comfort you. But then it will be a holy word of comfort, not just something that really doesn't mean anything. He's our helper. Well, we understand that. We all need help. Our intercessor. He helps us pray when we don't know how to pray as we ought to. He knows the mind of God. He puts things on our heart to pray. And he also prays through us and for us. He's our advocate, our lawyer who stands before the bar of justice and pleads our case. Our strengthener. My goodness, we all need strength. Our standby. He stands there just in case there's an opening in our life so he can help us. He comes into close fellowship with us. Jesus was with the disciples, but he said, I'm going to send you a comforter who will be in you. And like I've been saying, with is good, but in is better. You don't get any closer than in. Also, the Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit is the teacher, that he guides us into all truth, and that he even brings things to our remembrance when we need to know them. I don't know about you, but I need some Holy Ghost help with my memory on some days. And so I'm grateful that the Holy Spirit, and I trust God for that. I mean, I believe that scripture, uh, not only in that, but in, in uh, spiritual recall when I'm ministering and, and I need scriptures or examples and they come to me by the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something, hanging out with the Holy Ghost is a wonderful, wonderful adventure. We should be just completely filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3.16 says that we can be strengthened with all might and power in the inner man and have spirit-filled personalities. I love that. And then it even goes so far, so far as to say that we can know God in such a way that we can become just bodies, bodies, wholly filled and flooded with Him. So now we've also found out that although it's not something we probably would want to do if we really understood it and knew what we were doing, that we can grieve the Holy Spirit or we can also quench the Holy Spirit or hinder the Holy Spirit. Since the Holy Spirit is so amazingly valuable to us and the anointing that he provides, which is his enabling power and his presence in our life is so amazingly... You, how many of you are beginning to understand how valuable that is to you? how we must have the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, one touch from God can, can get, keep you going for a month. I mean, just one little special touch from God can just strengthen you and energize you in such an amazing way. And if we take time to wait on God, we're going to experience more of that. I believe that many of you, because you've taken time to be here at this conference, you have had a real touch from God. And you are going to go home and you feel energized, you feel refreshed. And boy, it's like you, you stopped here and you got your tank filled up and now you're going you're gonna to go back. I mean, you're ready to face the world again. And so that's the Holy Spirit that is strengthening you. So since the Holy Spirit is so amazingly valuable, the third person of the Trinity, actually God himself manifested as power. We do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit we do not want to vex, sadden, or offend the Holy Spirit. And Ephesians 4.30 says that we can do that through wrong talk, just foolish, silly, sinful, corrupt, polluted talking. It grieves the Holy Spirit when we say unkind things about other people. Gossip grieves the Holy Spirit. 
complaining and murmuring grieves the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that we can grieve the Holy Spirit through anger, through bitterness, through resentment, through rage, and all kinds of poisonous, wrong attitudes. I don't know if you know it or not, but my attitude and your attitude is very important to God. Hello. Then it talks about, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, talks about uh, hindering the Holy Spirit. And uh, there's ways that we do that, not helping people, not being thankful, different things like that. So we are to be led by the Spirit. And if we are led by the Spirit, then we're not going to grieve the Spirit. We're not going to quench the Spirit because we're going to be walking in obedience to God. Being led by the Spirit means walking in obedience to God. Now, under the old covenant, they were led by laws and rules and regulations, and it was a hard life. And every time they broke one of those, they had to sacrifice some animal, sacrifice something, some kind of a sacrificial offering to not get rid of the, of the, of the awareness of those sins, but it covered their sins. And so we have a new system since Christ has come called a new covenant our sins have been removed as far as the east is from the west. We remember them no more. They're not covered. They're washed, completely removed. And it's a continual process that goes on and on and on in our life. Aren't you glad that God's never going to run out of forgiveness? That's all. Oh, that's such good news. Such good news. So one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is he convicts us of sin. I'm grateful that the Holy Spirit lets me know when I'm doing something that God doesn't like. Because I'm a little dense sometimes, and sometimes I could just be doing something and going along my merry way and not even be realizing that it was wrong. I spent years going to church and then going out with my friends after church on Sunday gossiping about the pastor. I didn't have any awareness that that was wrong. Now, you laugh at me if you want to, but you've done the same thing. I know why you guys laugh. Well, that sermon was this, and I wouldn't this, and I wouldn't that. So. And then, of course, we all think we would do it better if it was us. And I had no awareness. Now, this is sad, but I had no awareness that it was wrong. Why? Because I, w I was not really hooked in to the Holy Spirit. I wasn't being led by the Holy Spirit. I was totally, completely carnal. Although I was saved and born again, I was completely carnal. Do you know that it is very possible to be born again, but still walking in the flesh? Well, there is a result that comes from that, and it is misery. We are miserable when we walk like that. There is another result. We are not a blessing or a benefit to anybody else, and we are a pathetic representation of what it means to be a Christian. Amen. So after having a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit, really beginning to learn the Word, now, I mean, I don't have to be very far at all into a conversation that is not pleasing to God, and I know it, just like that. And I mean, I've had to stop more than once in the middle of something and say, eh, wait a minute, <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be saying this, just, I'm sorry, forget it. And it's good for us to embarrass ourselves and do that from time to time. And honestly, when you fall deeply in love with Jesus enough, you will do anything in order to be obedient to him. He said in John 14, if you love me, you will obey me. Now, I think we can take that two ways. My level of obedience shows my level of love for God, but also loving him always equates into obedience. And so really, sometimes if you're having trouble with your behavior, the way to fix it is to just go spend more time with God. Because the more you hang out with Him, the more you're not going to want to grieve Him or vex or sadden Him. Thank God there's an answer besides just trying and struggling with myself and trying to make myself do what's right. So He convicts us of sin and He convinces us of righteousness. We now don't have to follow laws and rules and regulations. There's no rule that says I have to pray one hour a day and I have to read so many chapters of the Bible every day and I must do this and I must do that and I must do this, this, that, that and something else. 
We know, according to the guidelines of the word, that all those things are good for us. Prayer is good for us. But I can just pray till I'm finished. I can pray led by the Holy Spirit. One day I might pray two hours. The next day I might pray five minutes. One day I might pray early in the morning. The next day, when I'm having my time with God, maybe I don't get into that much prayer. And I find myself just praying my way through the day. Listen, when you hang out with the Holy Spirit, life never gets boring. Being a Christian does not get boring because everything is not the same thing day after day after day after day after day after day after day. Now, Romans 8, 14 says a very important thing. It says, all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Now, sons represents maturity. You notice it doesn't say all that are led by the Spirit of God are the babies of God. They are the sons of God. So spiritual maturity means that I'm no longer walking my own way. I'm no longer doing my own thing. I'm no longer waking up every morning and just having my own plan and then just doing my own thing all day long. And every time something doesn't go my way, now I'm getting upset. I may get up with a plan, but I submit my plan to God. And I say, God, if this is not your plan, then change it. If I'm in your way, move me out of your way. Your will be done. Your will be done. We must have an understanding that disobedience grieves the Holy Spirit. But I think it's even easier to understand this if we realize and accept the truth. And I want you to hear what I'm going to say. Everything, everything that God in his word tells us to do or not to do is for our benefit and our good. We're never going to do it if we don't believe that. I said we are never going to do it if we don't believe that. Everybody today wants to know what is the takeaway for my life? What am I going to get out of this? It's very hard to sell anything today if you can't tell people what they're going to get out of it. Even to exercise, we want to know, well, what am I going to get out of it? Well, you're going to look better, feel better, live longer, good health. Okay. You know, well, if I eat right, what am I going to get out of it? Well, you're going to feel better. No, 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 no. We all want a takeaway. So what is our takeaway from studying the word and living an obedient life? It's not just God being a mean ogre trying to boss us around all the time and not let us do the things we want to do. That's not what this is about. It's God saying, look. If you do this, your life is going to be blessed. And if you don't, things are not going to work out right. God knows what works and what doesn't. God sees the end from the beginning. And we may be over here somewhere thinking, boy, wow, this is the thing to do. But we haven't seen what that thing is going to create. Right now, we may be emotional about it, and that may be, woohoo, woohoo, yeah, ha, <laughs> ha. Okay, let's just say we've got a lonely woman who's desperate to get married. Let's just say maybe she's about 45 now, and so she's afraid she's going to be alone all of her life. So Mr. Good-looking so-and-so comes along. Well, let's, let's just even say he's maybe not quite as good-looking as she would have hoped, but now she's, you know, <laughs> she's ready to compromise a little bit. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, she started out wanting a spiritual giant, but he's, he, you know, he's, well, actually the truth is, is he's not even really saved, but, uh, he, he likes her and she's just real sure that if uh, she can snag him, that she can change him after they get married. Now, here's what happens. If that woman is really hooked in with the Holy Spirit, no matter what her emotions are like, no matter how much her thinking tries to drive it away. There's a little thing right down in here called the still small voice of God. Just a little sick feeling. A little, like just a little bitty sicky, yucky. Just, and you know what it is really? It's like, you know, you know that you shouldn't do it. You know that you shouldn't do it. Okay, it's not God sitting up in heaven saying, well, I just want you to be miserable and lonely all your life, so, you know, I don't want you marrying that guy. No, it's God saying, you don't know what you're getting into. He's not going to change after you marry him. Well, he will change. He will act worse. 
And of course, I'm not saying that nobody ever changes after you get married, but I'm saying that you got to go by what's in here. You got to go by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Well, you see, God not only sees the fact here that you're emotional and lonely and want to get married, but he sees all these years in between. And that's why he's over here knowing the end from the beginning and saying, don't do it. Please don't do it. Don't do it. Wait on me. Wait on me for the right situation. So it's so important that we begin to trust the Holy Spirit. And you need to trust yourself. Get to where you trust that discernment that you have in your spirit. I mean, some of you, you know, women sometimes get this thing on them where they got this ideal thing that they want to marry. And boy, they ain't even talking to anybody that don't fit that standard. And you better just throw your life open to God and say, well, I've got some goals here, God, but I want to do what you want me to do. Come on. I want to do what you want me to do. Because there's some amazing people out there that may not just tickle your fancy the moment you meet them. But they've got a lot of depth to them and, and, and people who need to be loved. They need to be loved into wholeness. So we need to learn how to really be led by the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to look at three scriptures that I think are going to encourage you to believe that if you really will make this step of faith to be led by the Spirit, there is a great takeaway. And that takeaway is you have a great life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do I have anybody here today that's been following the Holy Spirit long enough to know that God knows more than we do? And the takeaway from being led by the Spirit is joy and peace and righteousness and things just work and there's a flow and there's smoothness. Amen. Deuteronomy 10, 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. <laughs> for your good. God says, everything that I tell you is for your good. Have you ever said that to one of your kids? I know you don't understand why I'm not letting you do this, but it's for your good. I know you don't understand why I'm not going to let you go out and play now, but it's for your good. No, son, you can't go play out in the street in the middle of traffic. No, little Janie, you can't put your hand in the fire. No. It's for your good. Let us trust God that he is good. And he only has our benefit in mind. God didn't create us and bring us here just so he could watch us all be miserable. He's got a good life plan for us. And as we follow him, led by the Spirit... Almost every day I pray, God, keep me on the straight path that leads away to life and off the broad path that leads away to destruction. And if you're a partner with this ministry, I'm praying that for you on a regular basis too. I pray that God will straighten out every crooked path in front of you and you'll stay on the narrow path that leads away to life. Romans 8, 8, and 9. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature. Cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. Why? Why is God not pleased? Because he knows it's going to turn out bad for us. <laughs> God's not angry because we're not doing everything he tells us to do just because he wants to be a big boss and tell everybody what to do. It grieves him and hurts him when we don't trust him enough to follow his instructions and believe that he knows best for us. How many of you have gotten far enough along in your walk with God, at least to some degree, where you can pretty much kind of sort of tell when you're doing something God don't like? Okay. So then, do I want to ask how many of you obey that? And <laughs> well, I know I shouldn't eat this, but... I know I shouldn't put this on my charge account, but <laughs> I know I shouldn't say this, but I know I shouldn't act like this, but we just need to stop saying 
Well, I know this, but I know this, but what are we saying? I know that this is a stupid thing to do, but I'm going to do it anyway and hope I get by with it. Well, if you won't. <laughs> I mean, it's not that there's no mercy, but let me tell you something. We get a lot more mercy when we do something in ignorance than when we do something with our eyes wide open, knowing that we're doing it. Every time that you come and hear the truth, you become a little more responsible to need to do what God is asking you to do. Let's talk about this catering to the flesh for a minute. Have any of you ever been to a catered affair? They're fun, aren't they? We used to have some meetings many years ago where we would do them and have people at tables and have meals before the teaching sessions and they were catered events. I need water over here and somebody would run with it. Can I have more coffee and somebody would run with it. They brought the food to us. I need another napkin. Somebody would run with it. And it's, it's so much fun. You know, it, it's fun, isn't it, to go to one of those restaurants where they got a couple of waiters and boy, everybody's just there attentive and whoo, you, we like that. But it always, the more you're catered to, the more it shows up in the bill. <laughs> now, come on, there's a message here. So uh, we can cater to the flesh, but lo and behold, the bill will come. You know, wisdom makes a hard choice now so it will have a future benefit. Let me say that again. Wisdom makes a hard choice now so it will have a future benefit. Carnality does what feels good right now and doesn't care about later on, but later on always comes. Mm. Romans 8, 9. But you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the Spirit if the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you. So the only way to live the life of the Spirit is to be led, guided, directed, and willingly controlled by the Holy Spirit. Now, how many of you are smart enough to realize that a large majority of believers don't do this? And therefore, that is why we have such a pathetic witness on the whole, not everybody, in the world. So many millions of people just march off to church and go home and just act however they want to all week and go back to church. And, you know. and I, I believe that everybody should be plugged into a good local church. But I'll tell you what, being a Christian is, is about a lot more than just going to church. Well, as we learn to be sensitive and obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives, things work out so much better for us. Let's learn how to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit with our words and all of our actions. Today, we're offering you four CDs on the Holy Spirit. Get to know Him and His ministry as much as you possibly can. And a book that I wrote called Knowing God Intimately. I think you're gonna enjoy both of these resources. And today we're asking you if you will send in a good offering to help us with our TV programs to help pay for them, the one that you watch and all the ones around the world that are touching people's lives. If you're going to order resources today, you can add something extra with your order for the resources, or you can just send in an offering today and say, Joyce, I really appreciate the program and I want to help. You know, a lot of times people say, well, what can I do for you? Well, one of the things that you can do for us is help us continue helping you. God bless you, and thank you for being with us today. Take advantage of today's offer, which consists of Joyce's four-CD audio series, The Holy Spirit, and paperback book, Knowing God Intimately. This combination package provides life-changing truths for developing a closer relationship with God and experiencing His power through the Holy Spirit. The CD series, The Holy Spirit, and book, Knowing God Intimately, is available for a donation of $35. Call our toll-free number, 1-800-727-9673. Or visit us at JoyceMeyer.org. 
It's time, ladies, because this life is not a dress rehearsal. So we need to seize every opportunity God gives us. Join thousands at the 2016 Love Life Women's Conference. Don't miss the fun with Christine Kane. You go, girls. You did not give up. You did not stop. You continue to carry the baton of faith. Beth Moore. I'm redeemed by Jesus Christ. What does that mean to us besides everything? And Joyce Meyer. Why don't you stop looking at what everybody else does and comparing yourself to them and start realizing you can do something nobody else can do. Worship with Carrie Job and Lauren Daigle. And a special message about America by Dave Meyer. Learn how to live a life of purpose on purpose at the 2016 Love Life Women's Conference. September 29th through October 1st. So go on, girl. Register today. Well, whether it's getting out of debt, working on a relationship, or maybe even going back to school, you know you only get one life. Well, what are you doing with yours? It's time to start living life on purpose. Pick up your copy of Seize the Day to learn how. Be the first to read Joyce's new book, Seize the Day. Pre-order your copy today. Every time you're going through a difficult time, you might as well just open your mouth and say, praise God, I'm growing. Thank God I'm growing. I may be waiting right now longer than I'd like to, but I'm growing. I'm developing patience. Can I tell you that maintaining a good attitude in trouble is much more important than getting rid of the trouble? Mm, I better say that again. Maintaining a good attitude during trouble is much more important than getting rid of the trouble. One more time. Maintaining a good attitude in trouble. Oh, let's pick on the people watching by TV. Just in case you think I'm only talking to the people here in this room. Maintaining a good attitude in trouble is much more important than getting rid of the trouble. This summer, school is in session. Ready to take your relationship with God to a whole new level? Learn more about the power of God's Word and discover an amazing helper available to you. Join Joyce University on enjoying everyday life through the month of August. Man, I love telling other people what to do. Tune in for new subjects each week. Then go online for study material and classroom aids to help you make the grade. You get it? You've been watching Joyce University right here on Enjoying Everyday Life. Hãy 
nhầm rằng em ở đây người ra đổi thay tình mình vẫn đông đầy thế mới biết anh vẫn yêu em vì sao tìm quên chốn xưa ngày ta quen <cười> giấc mơ của người giờ đây có anh không người hỡi bao năm say ta có bên người còn đâu làm tuyết trắng mùa đông khóc nhớ một đời tạ tới đóng băng tim mình 